In this video, I am going to try and provide you with a couple of methods for creating a long extended gable end overhang. And in this example here, this one here is about seven foot. The garage is a two car garage, about 20 foot by 20 foot. And it's going to require a large beam on each side. I won't be able to provide you with what type of beam or footings or connectors you would use, but uh, give you an idea of how it can be built. So here we have the extended beam. You see where the rafter is sitting on top. Fascia board is not. In the other example, the fascia board will be sitting on top of the beam without any of the lookouts. The rafters are 24 inches on center. Just extended the ridge out here and then notched it for the fascia board. But in the next example, I'm going to um, bring the, make the ridge a little smaller so that it's not sticking past here. And again, just kind of throwing out some ideas there for you. More ideas, you can put your combination of ideas together to build something like this. Another view of it there. Here we can see the beam going all the way. It's built into the wall. Sheathing. Remove the sheathing. And fascia board, rafters, the beam again. You can see here with the beam, I got a couple of straps on it sticking out. Remember the, the one-third out rule um, this is 6 feet and this is 12 feet. So if we divided one third into the overhang, uh, I should say if we use the overhang and multiply it by 2, that should probably do it. So if we have a 6 foot overhang, we're, we're going to need to go back 12 feet. I have another video on that, cantilevers, but that usually isn't too difficult to figure out. And remember, these are just examples. This might not work for your particular project. A strap to connect the top plates to the beam. And then, of course, the top of the wall will be even with the top of the beam. A couple of straps connecting the top plate to the beam. And then the beam to the post. And here I have a 4x6. And the four by, reason why I put the 4x6 in here is you're going to have a lot of pressure in this area right here. So it wouldn't be a bad idea to use a 4x6 or maybe multiple studs, three or four studs nailed together. A view of the other side there. And then, of course, a footing. You might need a large concrete pad for this. Like I said, there's going to be a lot of weight right here. From, from the load that's transferring from this area down to here. Give you an idea what it would look like from the bottom. In this example, I went ahead and brought the fascia board back and it's sitting on top of the beam. You can see the edge of the beam is even with the edge of the fascia board or face of the fascia board. You can always bring this back an inch and a half or whatever the thickness is of the rafter or the fascia board and um, and then you wouldn't need to notch it you could just nail it into the edge of the beam i've done that before for a variety of different times so this finish right here just doesn't do anything for me if the rafter is in front of the beam it's also going to prevent water from seeping in and sitting on top of the beam and rotting the beam out also and here's what i was talking about with the ridge i went ahead and made a little shorter this might uh, work for whatever type of ceiling you're planning on using. It might not. You might be able to go with the other method. Another view of it there. And here we can see where the beam is cantilevering out. And this is about six feet. This cantilever here would be about six feet. The other one was about seven foot two or seven foot four inches with the fascia board uh, running past the last rafter. Let's go ahead and throw some ceiling joist in there. If you're looking for a flat ceiling, they're always helpful. There they are. I think these are about two by eight to scale. And if you're going to build a wall in the front, you might need to double up this joist or put a beam in here. 
and then of course gable stud up the side and then you could finish the, the front of it off to make it look like a gable end. There's our joist. Here's a rafter tie here. We're using the joist as a rafter tie. And of course one in the front. And if you aren't going to install any ceiling joist, it might not be a bad idea to install a rafter tie at the front here. This will prevent the beams from spreading apart. And but again, it depends on what type of look you're looking for. Just to run something across here, you go, I might you might not want that. So you need to check with your engineer or local building authorities for that. Because my concern would be for this to spread apart. And then, of course, once it does, the ridge is going to sag. So that would be a big concern uh, for something like this, especially when the overhang is out like this, where it's about six feet. Another thing I like is the chamfered uh, end. I like this. Always have liked it. For the end of this, it would look nice. And the last thing I would like to say would be that your beam size could actually encroach on your headroom here. So, for example, if you have an 8-foot ceiling and a 12-inch wide beam, you're only going to end up with 7 feet. Now, 7 feet would be fine for um, something like this. But if your beam is longer than that, if you have like a a glue lamb beam that's going to be 24 inches long, you might need to raise the height of the entire um, ceiling. So keep that in mind. Keep the bottom of the beam height in mind when you're building something like this. Uh, last thing you want to do is build something like this so you can walk around and enjoy the overhang but uh, hit your head on the beam. So anyway that is it for the video. If you like it you know what to do. Hit the old thumbs up button and any questions or comments uh, leave them in the comment area. Any video suggestions feel free to leave them in the comment area also or email them to us.